Oh, thank you, Master. Turn to your neighbor, tell him this is your day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, everybody lift your hands to heaven and get a drink. <laughs> yes, Lord, fill us and overflow us. <laughs> and let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And grant us from your throne room, Master, more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That we may be about your business in true spirit and in power, manifesting your kingdom. In Jesus' name. How many of y'all know God wants you to manifest his kingdom? Manifesting the kingdom of God is a part of what every Christian should be doing. How many of y'all know Jesus is not Christian? What? He's Christ. We're to be Christ-like. That's what it means. <laughs> Hallelujah. <sighs> okay. First Peter chapter 5. <laughs> Jesus. Help me get through this. <laughs> See, I needed this. Joy to the Lord is my strength. <laughs> you know, God wants us to fall in love with him. I'm really going to get through this. <laughs> you know, when, when the Lord really touches you, one of the things that people want to be touched by God, and, and he says, when you touch my heart, I'll touch yours. Amen. Well, our focus is in the arena is to touch his heart. Touching his heart. You know, we, we deal with so much stuff. <laughs> There's so much stuff going on. But if we really learn how to walk in Christ, the stuff stays out <laughs> and it can't touch you. Well, again, he just wants us to love him And receive his love. Because that's a part of the kingdom of God. He created me and you out of love. Amen? Jesus didn't manifest the kingdom of God to bring glory to himself. He manifested the kingdom of God to bring glory to the Father who loves me and you. That's why he created us. Everything was that. And one of the things he said, man, I, I want to leave my joy with you. Why? Because joy is love in the kingdom. Joy is love in the kingdom. And in his presence is fullness of joy. Why? Because his presence is pure love. We, we can get caught up in so many things. See, because every, everybody is looking for love. Everybody no matter what, you're, you're created out of love. You're going to look for love. And that love is, means you're looking for a fulfillment. And you know what? When you find it, you want more. Because that's how you and I were created. We're created in love. And we want more love. But we don't want lust. We want love. See, the world can only offer you worldly love. That's what we call matrix love. It comes from the world, not from the Father. So people begin to look for love in wrong places. They look for love in a bottle. They look for love 
in a bar. They look for love in novels. They look for love on the internet. They look for love in drugs, pornography. They look for love. Some people only go to church to try and find a spouse, never seeking God. See, because you and I were created in this love and we want love. And your only fulfillment of true love, true love, can come from his presence. Even your spouse can't give you the love like God can give you. So people look to just get married to find love and hope that it brings fulfillment. And when it doesn't bring fulfillment, they blame one another. <laughs> because they're not filled with God's presence. They're not looking for the right love. They're not, they're not attached to the throne room of God. And then you know what they do? They try to go back and fix everything and hope that it will work better the second or third time. How stupid can we be and still breathe? You know, it's pretty amazing because I was married for eight years and divorced for three, three years. It wasn't until I found true love, true love in the presence of God that I could go back to my wife. Because if I couldn't bring her the true love of God, I would bring her the same old garbage over and over. I would make promises and fail. And I would fake it, but not make it. Because <laughs> eventually you'll manifest. <laughs> I would try to rule demon management and not get rid of them. But when I found the true love, God restored us. We love each other, but our first love is the Lord. So we, we are filled and fed from his presence so we can love one another. And what happens is when it's not, it doesn't maintain a level of presence and love, then you begin to look for one another for fulfillment and you get discouraged again. Only he can bring you true love. Only him. In 1 Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. In verse 5. Would you read it with me? Likewise, you what? You younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Now listen. He doesn't mean age. This doesn't mean younger. It means maturity. It means those who are less mature, make sure you submit to those who are mature. There's a lot of elderly, older people wanting a younger one to submit to them because of age when they're acting younger than they are in maturity. It ain't going to work. Doesn't work. Not in the kingdom. This has got nothing to do with age. It's got maturity. Yes, all of you be submissive to who? One another. That means respect one another. And be clothed with what? Being clothed with humi humility means you're denying yourself. For God does what? He does what? He resists the what? Proud. That means promote self. See, God does not associate with self. He doesn't communicate with self. He communicates with his children, not self. But he gives grace to the what? To the humble. That's his plan. 
Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you. Into, in other words, that he may release a promise to you in due time. Casting your care upon him for he what? He cares for you. In other words, he's saying, listen, I got it. You cast me this stuff. I got it. I heard you. Now let's, let's commune. See, so many times we just want God to hear us without saying hello. <laughs> now, now I, I, are you ready for this? It says, be sober. <laughs> this doesn't mean just stay out of bars and nightclubs and stuff like this. What it, <laughs> it, it means be alert. Be attentive. Be vigilant means being consistent. See, what he's saying here is very, submit yourselves, right, to those who are more mature. Maintain a humble attitude that you may be able to receive from God and relinquish yourself from the cares of the world. It's real simple. <laughs> For God knows what you need. Does everybody get it? And he's going to release it in due time. Now, the reason why he's saying, now look it, be sober and be vigilant, be alert and be consistent. What he's saying here is there's something you're going to have to do now. You're going to mean, have to maintain a lifestyle, what I just explained. See, so many people come in to, and they get revelation and it becomes an event. Woohoo! Got it! Yeah! <laughs> Let me put that in my pocket. Not in her heart. We don't do Bible studies. You're here for a training session. Why? Because God wants to train us. We're all learning. Even as it's coming out of my mouth, I'm learning. Because the anointing teaches us, not this person. We'd all be in trouble if this person talked to Everybody agrees, thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Keep me humble. <laughs> Hallelujah. So one of the things that we got to do is we have to be alert. Alert is the area where you're, you're tentative to what? The enemy's strategies. But if you're not living that lifestyle, you're not attentive to those things. You're not sensitive to those things. And he says, listen, I want you to be consistent. Consistent in what? Consistent in assembling. Consistent in the word. Consistent in prayer. Consistent to strengthen your spirit so that your soul can be renewed and you can have dominion. Be consistent. Why? Well, because, what's it say? Your adversary, the what? The devil. Not a person. Not a person. The powers of darkness. The devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Like who he's going to look to kill, steal, destroy, to manipulate, to mislead, to prevent you from being what? Alert and consistent. That's his job. If he can prevent you from being, from being alert and consistent, you won't manifest the kingdom of God. The only thing that will be manifesting is you. It says here, okay, now I've told you all this. Why? What's going to happen? You're going to be able to resist him steadfast in the what? Faith. Because faith is going to increase in your life. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody experiences it. You're not the only one. Even when he tries to tell you, you're the only one. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you suffered a little bit, that's how you get trained. Hello? If you think walking in with Christ is going to be uh, tiptoeing through the tulips, it ain't going to work. 
Amen? It's not a skip in the park. The Word tells us that the way of the, the walking with the Lord is narrow and difficult. Now, the purpose of our trials and tribulations and trainings and sufferings is to train me and you. Because you're not going to learn anything unless you get on a job training. You must take it from the schoolroom and experience it. Because when you've experienced something, you can share it. I can't go into the jails unless I experienced it. I know what it's like to be sentenced to life and wonder if you ever come out. I know what it's like, the pain of losing your family and your loved ones. And your only way out is death. That allows me, and after I experienced the one that renewed me, healed me, and brought me out, now I can bring it to others. Everyone here has a testimony and an experience, and God is still building your testimony with more and more experiences. So we got to stop running from the trials and tribulations and grab them. Embrace them. Why? So we learn. <laughs> and after you've suffered a while, right, what happens then? You'll become what? Perfect. Perfect. Established. Strengthened. And you'll be settled so you don't move or get moved in that arena again. The only way that you can get moved in that arena again is if you're not consistent and alert. Amen? Hallelujah. So there's an area where you and I must maintain a lifestyle. That's kingdom living. Knowing uh, the strategies of our enemy and the tactics, we must be consistent in prayer, in word of God, in assembling. For support to yourself, hello, and support to your fellowship and your brother. You know, when you show up, you're supporting someone else. You know, because everyone is tempted with deception, fear, loss, pride. And the purpose of the enemy's temptations is so that you and I lose a level of faith. The word even warns us that many will fall from the faith. That's another level of faith. Why? Because it takes a level of faith to overcome. It takes a level of faith to overcome the world and its temptations. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Man manifesting the kingdom of God. That's what you and I are called for. Well, you can't manifest the kingdom of God if you're not manifesting faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews 10. In verse 19, I think. Would you read it with me? Therefore, brethren, what? Having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So we need to have boldness to enter in. When we're praising and worshiping, we need to have boldness to enter in. There's too many people wiping down the chairs. <laughs> They're wiping down the chairs with their handkerchief. The problem, they ain't took it out yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> it says, enter the hall. Man, we got to enter in. Man, we pray. Man, those chairs, you know what those chairs should be? Everybody should kick those chairs off and get up. <laughs> One day I'm going to surprise you. There ain't going to be no chairs in here. <laughs> You have to 
but bring your own. <laughs> bring your own pillow. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for me and you, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us what? Draw near with a true what? Heart in full assurance of faith. Having, having what? Our hearts what? Sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure blood. Pure water. Sorry. <laughs> so you don't offend your neighbor. <laughs> Verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without what? Wavering. For he who promised is what? Faithful. And let us consider one another in order to what? Stir up love. Let us consider one another. Stir up love and good works. What is, how does he say to do it? By what? Don't forsake what? Assembling. Why? Because it brings support to you and support to others. You encourage others when you show up. See, the kingdom of self is only interested in self. Yeah, but I pray in the spirit. I read my word. I do this. I do that. Yeah, but you're not assembling. So you can have all your religious acts, but still not be obedient. Does everybody understand that? Look at a joy there is here today in assembly. Everyone's encouraging one another. Hey, I'm good to see you. Yeah, praise God. You support yourself, you support others. That's why he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You know, there's going to be a time where we're going to be assembling almost every night to get through what's going on. Oh, hallelujah. Now look, at then he says this. Uh, he, he says all of this here, enter boldness. Why? Because you need to get in God's presence. You need to assemble. To support one another, support yourself. Why? He says, because this is what's the end result. Verse 26. If we sin willfully. What is he, why does he say that? Because he knows that if we don't do these things, if we're not alert, if we're not consistent, we're going to associate with evil again. Either, either a religious state of evil or a lustful evil. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Assurance of faith. We must have this assurance of faith which is spiritual sight, trusting in God and His promises. Now listen, the word tells us that anything's not of faith is sin. Amen? I can assure you right now that this country has lost faith in God. It's lost faith in God. Why? By promoting and approving same-sex marriage nationwide, which has been approved by the Supreme Court. By maintaining support for abortions. By the expansion of perversion on TV, movies, music. This country has lost faith in God. The only faith they have is in themselves. And of course we... <sighs> You can expect judgment here. But why judgment comes, we're not accounted for wrath. We'll be the light. Amen? Amen? So there's no escape from judgment unless it turns from evil. 
And I haven't seen that happen yet. You kidding? They're jumping for joy. For them, it's like some, when the guy stepped on the moon. One step for mankind. They have no idea. It's one step closer to judgment. We must manifest the kingdom of God while we have time before it's too late. Israel and America are two prophetic nations of God's time clock. When America just approved the marriages of sin, a pro, the Pope just approved and agreed with Palestine having its own state or nation, which is an offense to Israel. Hmm. Things are about to happen. We must be alert and consistent. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse uh, 14, would you read that with me, please? Paul writes, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everyone in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord wills. I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and spirit of gentleness? The kingdom of God is not in word, but in what? Power. Power what? What do you mean? Power to overcome. Overcome what? The world. Power to overcome temptation. Power to overcome ungodly thoughts. Power to overcome decisions that will displease God. Power to overcome. And the word tells us that our faith is what overcomes the world. So that means our relationship with the Lord. There's two important things that we must have. Relationship and faith. Without relationship and faith, the kingdom of God cannot be manifested. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Mark 6, or Matthew 6, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 6. Is everybody okay? Manifesting the kingdom of God. So to manifest the kingdom of God, you got to manifest faith, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whew. What did I say? Oh, Matthew. <laughs> Glory. Verse 8, please. What does he say? Jesus is speaking this. He says, therefore, don't be like them. What, who is he talking about? The religious, the Gentiles, the unbelievers, those that have a form of godliness but deny the power. Don't be like them. For your father knows the things you need of before you ask them. He says, in, in this manner, therefore, pray, our father in heaven, let's speak it together. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, he gives you a guideline. He says, man, look at it. Let's manifest the kingdom of God. Now, there's a couple of things that, you know, you, you got to be careful that will prevent you from manifesting the kingdom of God. He says right here in verse 14, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father forgives you. So forgiveness has got to be the first thing. You must forgive, but you don't understand. I don't want to understand. I don't care what was done to you. And don't act like God doesn't know. And you don't have to tell everybody it was done to you. He knows. What you need to do is forgive. But you don't know what my ex-wife or ex-husband did. Oh, shut up. Don't bring in your past into my presence. Hallelujah. Shut up and get ye behind me. But you don't know what my boss said. He cheated me 50 cents on my check. I'm going to kill him. Should have donated that last week anyways. <laughs> you squeaky thing. Hallelujah. Forgive others, man, no matter what's happened. I don't care if you were raped, abused, beat, you forgive. You let go. Why? Because they're only harming you. And don't go back on it. Don't keep sticking your hands in the beat me up pile. <sighs> Every time you stick your hands in there, they go in your mouth. You bite your nails and stuff like that. Get goofy. Forgive others no matter what. It says, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, either will your father forgive your trespasses. Hello? I use that in my house all the time. Sorry, hon, you got to forgive me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. In verse 16, he said, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. Man, there's so many people. It's incredible. I'm fasting today. You're not supposed to tell anybody. It's between you and God. Well. What happened to your relationship? Now, there's nothing wrong with fasting. In fact, a tr truly true fasting is fasting from the world. That's the true fast. It's not about not eating. It's about fasting from the world. But I'm not going to get into that. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 19. Would you read it with me? It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures where? Yeah. In heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where these thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your what? There your heart is. You know, some of us could have yard sales. We're building, saving so many things. Hallelujah. What is he saying? Be a giver. Don't just receive, be a giver. 24. No, 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 22, I'm sorry. 
So be a giver. Not from abundance, but sometimes we need to give from suffering. The woman with the, uh, the, that gave a little bit, she gave from her lack. From her lack. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Would you read it with me? The lamp of the body is the what? The eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? What he's saying, what are you focusing on? What, what are you seeing? What do you put in your light, your eyes on? What do you focus on in your life? It's called lust of the eye. It's a desire for the world. We call it eye candy. These are things that will prevent the kingdom of God from manifesting. Again, there's forgiveness. There's a lack of personal relationship with the Lord. The area of being stingy, selfish. The lust of the eye. In verse 24. It says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise it. You cannot serve God in money. Hello? Did you know that that money ain't yours anyways? The clothes I have on aren't mine. They're loners. Praise God. I sure don't need them when I go home. I need them when I drive home. That'd be a problem. Don't serve money. What you give, God will replace with more. See, because then there's no faith. There's no trust. Oh, nice money. Far be it, I give all this up. What if it rains? How will I fix my roof? Well, if you give it up, you're going to get more back. It's called greed, stingy, fear. Is everybody okay? Verse 31. Hallelujah. What does he say? Therefore what? Don't worry. How many of y'all know worry is a sin? Yeah. It's a sin. Why? Because it opens the door to demonic activity. Don't worry, man. Saying, what shall we eat? What shall we wear? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we see? Or whatever. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek after these. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But what? Now, wait a minute. Here's the conclusion of everything. But what? Seek first the kingdom of God. And is what? That's, a, that's kingdom living. But seek the kingdom of God. Kingdom living, his righteousness. Kingdom living, lifestyle. And all these things will be added to you. So everybody got that? Real simple. Seek the kingdom of God. His righteousness, his character, his promises, his presence. To manifest the kingdom of God, we must live in the kingdom. And have a lifestyle of the kingdom. So everybody get that? See, everybody wants to manifest the kingdom of God with not even living in it. They dance around it. Romans 14. Romans 14. Hallelujah. In verse 14. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. He's talking about food now, because there are things unclean, amen? 
Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, and you are no longer walking in love, do not destroy with your food the one of whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Hello. But is what? Righteousness and peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourselves before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not of faith is what? Say it with me. For whatever is not of faith is sin. Yeah. Now, again, faith is sight, spiritual sight. It's trusting in God and his promises. Amen? 1 Corinthians 6. In verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Do you not know that the unrighteous, so an unrighteous person will be someone that doesn't seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? Hallelujah. An unbeliever. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? So can a person accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and become unrighteous? Yes. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals. Hello. Nor homosexuals. Doesn't mean I don't like the person. I love the people. But they have a demon that I don't like. And my dad doesn't like. nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, lesbians, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rival, rivalers, revilers, thank you, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. They're not going to get in, man. Look at what's going on in the world today. There was a man that was an athlete that I looked up to when I was young. His name was Bruce. Now it's Brucey. What is it? Caitlin. Dude had a sex change. I mean, come on, he's got kids, he's got all kinds of... What? Who the heck told him that? <laughs> Who the heck told you? Did you not look in the mirror the day before? Slam! And they all proved it. Oh, you came out really. It's the real you. No, it's not. It's the real demon. That's a real demon that just took over that man. And they're, all the statistics say that over 90-something percent of them end up dead by suicide. They don't live long. But they won't tell them that. You kidding the surgeons just want the cash. This guy gets a sex change from Bruce to Brucey or with Katie or whatever. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you wonder what God's going to call him when he comes before the throne. <laughs> Where are you, Bruce? 
What happened to you? <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> you did the same thing Adam did. Except for he didn't go that far. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I can't go any further with that. <laughs> I can't go any further with that. <laughs> well, I could write a book on that one, praise God. <sighs> <laughs> oh, glory. Verse 11. And such were some of you who you were washed, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were what? Justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are what? Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of what? Any. I will not be brought under the power of any. Does everybody see that? So that means we got to use some wisdom here, man. <laughs> if you're not living in the kingdom, if you're not living a lifestyle of the kingdom, you're living a lifestyle of evil. See, the world calls it good because out of the tree they're eating is called good and evil. But out of the eternal tree it's called Righteous. See, the world will call you self-righteous because they got no idea what righteousness is. They don't know what it is. They only know what good and evil is. And they're not going to understand your language either. The heck's he talking about? Demon. I don't have a demon. <laughs> What's a demon? Hallelujah. They're going to start manifesting more and more and more. Why? Because the kingdom of God is going to manifest more and more and more. So these spirits are going to start to manifest more and more. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 4. Oh, yeah. Verse 7. Would you read it with me, please? But we what? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Whoa. Wow. So many times we think it's us. Man, I'll never forget praying for that one woman, the Lord healed, that was paralyzed. When that woman walked up to me and said, would you pray for me? I went, oh, God, help me. He said, don't worry, guy, it's not you. I said, cool. What do I do? He said, cast a serpent out of her. And I did. She got healed and ran around the church. I said, okay, I like that. Let's do that again. Yeah. <laughs> I love to see demons run and people get healed and freed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go a little further here. <laughs> Verse 8. We are what? Hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. That means through us. That's manifesting the kingdom of God through us. For we who live are always delivered to death. In other words, you're always coming to the end of yourself so Jesus can reveal himself. Hello. Always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be what? Manifested in our mortal bodies and our mortal flesh or in our, because we're here. He's trying to manifest through me and you. He wants your hands. He wants your mouth. He wants your heart. He wants your presence. 
He wants all of you. But we're going to have to be a relationship. Relationship. You got to know him. You got to be willing to hear him. You got to be willing to obey him. But you got to love him. Because you won't love, you won't obey something you don't love. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 12. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith. Everyone say same spirit of faith. Hey, we all have the same spirit of faith. Isn't that something? The problem is most people don't even use them. We have the same spirit of faith. According to what was written, I believed and therefore I what? Whoa. I believe and I speak. Why do I speak? Because I believe. So I don't speak because I don't believe. If I speak and don't believe, then I'm just speaking. And nothing's going to happen. But if I believe and speak, something is happening. Why? Not because, now listen, not because it's happening now, but because it always has been happening. See, when God spoke, it already continues. It never stops. It never stops. His word never stops. His word is sustaining everything right now. It's sustaining me and you. Never stops. So that's all I'm doing is grabbing hold. I'm, I'm sucking in the word that he has already spoken. And I'm speaking it out because I'm the channel which brings it into this realm. Does everybody get it? Not because of anything of me, but because... Of the treasured vessel that's in me. He who's in me is greater than he who's in the world. See, so we don't focus on I power. We focus on what he's promised already. So what we want to do is begin to walk into the things that are already. Does everybody get it? See, you're already healed. You're already delivered. Why? Because there's no distance in space or time in God. What we're trying to do is catch up with our healing. <laughs> we're trying to catch up with our prosperity. But he'll bring it. You don't have to chase it. It will come to you. You just have to stay in divine order by being diligent and consistent and everything's going to fall into place. Why? Because his will unfolds. His will always unfolds. Is everybody all right? Whew, yeah. <laughs> Verse 14, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not what? We don't quit. We don't give up, man. We don't lose sight. We don't go back. See, for so many people, it's still a consideration. Well, I can always go back. Slap! Well, I can always go back. Then you ain't got no faith. Well, I can always go back just in case. Just in case it doesn't work out or you ain't got no faith at all, man. There's no consideration of going back. It's cut, done, over with, goodbye, see you later, get behind me. Does everybody understand that? Forget it. Why? Because you can't fix it anyways. Every time we tried it, we messed it up. We made it more worse. And then we went from one mess to another mess. Okay, that mess is no good. I'll get rid of that. Well, let me pick up another one. And they go, now you're living from the past and not from the future. Remember, manifesting the kingdom of God is living from the future, not from the past. What you're doing is walking into the future all the time. 
and you're leaving the past behind. It doesn't mean you won't run into people from your past Amen. who will try to bring you to your past. And they'll try to remind you of your past. Hey! That's when you got to give them the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Cut loose. You don't let those thoughts and those things interfere. You maintain what God says, not what man says. Is everybody all right? Therefore, we don't lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being what? Renewed, Renewed when? Renewed. Every day. The more that you are consistent, you are being renewed. For our light affliction. <laughs> For our what? Light, light affliction. Light, everyone say light affliction. Light, 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 light. Turn to your neighbor so you got a light affliction. But for a moment. Hallelujah. Well, now wait a minute. Say, turn to him and say, it's working for you. For more excellent and eternal weight of glory. Now you ain't said that to your neighbor before, have you? Yeah, man, your mess is working for you, bro. It's working for you. I get people call me all the time. Oh, man, I've lost everything. I said, praise God. <laughs> what do you mean, praise God? You don't know. I just lost my wife. I lost this. I lost that. I lost my job. I lost this. I lost that. You ain't lost you yet. Amen. You're still trying to maintain and hold on to everything. God can't use you if you're still holding on to the world. You cannot manifest the kingdom of God. It's impossible. You'll still manifest. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I get people call all the time. I say, praise God. Great candidate. You're ready. You don't understand. I don't need to, man. You're still, you're on your last stage of fighting for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, here we go again. Are you ready? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly eternal weight of glory, while we don't look at the what? Things which are seen. Hallelujah. But the what? The things which are not seen. Why? Where's your influence coming from? Who told you that? Why do you feel that way? And where that root is? What's going on? Making the unseen what? Seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Hebrews 6. One more scripture. Hebrews chapter 6. Are you learning something today? Manifesting the kingdom of God. Training for reigning. Yeah. Got to kick some butt. Hebrews. Chapter 6. Verse 1. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us what? Go on to what? Perfection. Wow. Perfection. Not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of the faith towards God. Of the doctrine of baptisms and the laying on of hands. Of the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. Why? We should have that. That should be... Why? Because if you're living a lifestyle of the kingdom, this is a common thing. There's no need to go. Let, let's go further. Let's go deeper. And this is the will of God if God permits. Verse 4, read it with me. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they what? 
If they fall away to what? Renew them again to repentance. Why? That's all you can do is pray for them. Only God can do that. Since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put Him to a what? Open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and, bear, and berries, it is what? Briars. And is what? Rejected and near to being cursed whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany what? Salvation, though we speak in this manner. In other words, salvation is the beginning. It's not the end. There's so much more for me and you. Ephesians 2. Listen, we, sh we should be at a place where we are, our faith should be a place of expectation, anticipation, joy, declaration, proclamation, vision. All of these things, man. We're seeing it. And we're calling it in. Ephesians chapter 2 is everyone there, starting verse 1. Let's speak it together. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power bearer of the, the spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of what? Wrath. Wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in his mercy, because of his great love, his great what? Love, love which, with when, which he loved us, even when we were idiots, and we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you've been saved, and raised us up together and made us to where? Sit together, where? And have, in other words, there's plenty of room, okay? You and I sit together in heavenly places. So we should be sitting together here too. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? We are his what? Workmanship. workmanship. We are his workmanship, created where? In Christ Jesus for what? Good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? That we should what? Well, oh man, do you get that? It's already been prepared. Listen, when the Lord decided, I, I, you, come here. Whoosh, come out of darkness, place you in the light. He already had a preset for you. He's going to ignore me, he's going to ignore me, he's going to ignore me, and on this one, he's not. Why? Because I'm going to answer the prayer from this one. I made a promise with this one to rescue this one. Hello? Why? Because he keeps his promises. Does everybody get it? <laughs> so we see here then that in this, we are his workmanship. He relies on me and you to be clean, to be sanctified, to come out from among them and be separated, to stay filled, to keep ourselves denied of self, to submit. The Bible says submit to God and resist the devil. If you can't submit, you can't resist. Does everybody get this? He wants to manifest his kingdom in us and through us. Mark 16. Mark 16. Manifesting the kingdom of God is manifesting the spirit of faith and is also manifesting the will of God. Does everybody get it? He, he's going to manifest that he's got to use someone. 
Now, did you ever change plumbing? Did you ever get a, you know, anybody has a plugged plumbing? Amen. It's pretty nasty. The water can't flow, can it? Until the tubes are cleaned out. That's where he wants me and you emptied of self. So he can flow. It's a daily process. Again, this is not an event. This is a lifestyle. It's not an event. It's a what? Lifestyle. lifestyle. We, this is what we're to live. It's not just to come to uh, Sunday or whatever. Take what you got here and put it in your pocket and go home and not live it. It's to digest it, learn it. It becomes in your life. You're exchanging these things in your life. In Mark 16, 16, is everyone there? Believe. Believes and is baptized will be what? Saved. Saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Yeah. Believe. Is belief associated with faith? Yeah. And these signs will follow those who what? Believe. The word believe means to what? Follow. So if you're not following, you're not believing. Amen. There's no way you're going to manifest the kingdom of God. And these signs will follow those who believe. He says, in my name they will what? Cast out demons. Why? That's the main problem. They will speak with new tongues. That's called baptism of the Holy Ghost. These are promises of God. When you see, oh, I'm going to go into this later. You see will. See that? He says, and they will. That's a, that's a covenant promise. Anywhere you see will in the Bible. That's a covenant promise from God. Will and shall. Will. They will take up serpents. They will speak in tongues. They will cast out demons. They will, they will, they will, they will. It's not a choice of, I will. That's a promised covenant from God Almighty with you. That you will. Does everybody get it? They will take up serpents. That doesn't mean you're going to, you know, go dance with these serpents. These idiots that are out there. It's amazing to me. These religious goofballs. They're granolas. Nutty and fruity. Amen. They think they're healthy. They're new agers. They're dancing with these serpents. And it says here, and, 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 and if they uh, drink anything, it won't hurt them. Drink anything deadly, it won't hurt They're out there testing, they're tempting God, testing God. And these kids are becoming parentless. Because they're getting bit by these serpents and they're dying from drinking Sinai. Now look it, it says, and they will, but it will, it will by no means hurt them. Hello? means you're going to recover no matter what. They will lay hands. They will, they will, and they will lay hands on the sick. And they will what? Recover. That means they're going to get healed. That means they're already healed. They just need to walk in it. Well, I don't feel healed. Oh, shut up. I didn't ask you how you felt. If you're going to walk by how you feel, you're in trouble. God's not the God of feelings, he's the God of truth. Those feelings will mislead you every time. That's what the devil manipulates people on. The feelings of the kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness. Peace, joy, and righteousness. And that can only come from the presence of God. Does everybody get it? Manifesting the kingdom. Now you do have a free will to choose to cooperate. Amen? <laughs> that's your free will but when you connect your will with his will you have a covenant promise every time amen, amen. praise God Father we thank you for your word today we are honored and blessed again I remind you of your covenant promise of healing everyone in this room freeing everyone in this room and bringing revelation to everyone in this room that we may live a lifestyle according to the kingdom and not according to the world.
in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.